In this session, we're going to take a look at how we can optimize Unity's UI by using scriptable objects and custom scripts to make a flexible UI system for use in a large-scale project. Traditionally, building a UI for a game can be quite time-consuming, cumbersome, and often a bit awkward. I know personally I found myself designing UI, making prefabs, and then halfway through the project needing to rework everything to fit a new style. So, for instance, you might decide that you don't want these all to be blue anymore, and you want to go through and change all of these to green. So you click on the button, and then you have to find all of them and click through them. And, you know, if you've got a big project, this can be quite annoying. So the goal of this session is to show you how we can build on Unity's default UI to create our own custom UI templates with custom scripts that are styled using a single scriptable object so that when we want to make changes, they'll automatically update across our whole project. Let's take a look at what I mean by this. If I open up this scene here, uh, you can see that we've already got stuff pre-styled. Now these are using a special script that I've written with a scriptable object attached. Now if we open up this scriptable object, we can see that if I change the default color here, it actually automatically updates all of the buttons at once. So all of them are inheriting from this. So if we want to change our accept button color to be, or our normal button color to be green, we can do that. Uh, or we can change it to be purple, for instance. And I can completely swap all of this stuff out, for instance, with uh, an alternate skin too. So we've got another version here. And if I pop that on there, you can see how that button has now changed to use this skin instead. And maybe I want that one to use the original skin, but this one on the end here uh, to use the alternate skin too. So let's pop that in there and that changes. So now if I go to here and change the just the default color on the alternate skin, they both change, but this one stays the same. So we've got some sort of skinning options as well. In this system, our custom components on our game objects are actually driving the behavior of the UI. So we can see here, we can change what type of button it is. And the actual style itself is being driven by a scriptable object. And if you've ever done any HTML coding, you can think of it as a style sheet for your UI. Another additional benefit of building your UI this way is that we can create themes for our UI layouts, and maybe we've built a themed expansion for our game, and now everything needs to look different, we can simply assign a different skin data object onto our elements and completely change the look of our UI. You might be asking, why not just use the legacy GUI skinning? Well, it's worth remembering that scriptable objects can actually contain any data we like. They can also perform functions too. So we have a lot more flexibility in regards to our layouts and behaviors of our custom components here. So by the end of this session, you'll be able to create customizable UI elements, create a style template using scriptable objects, and assign different styles to your elements with multiple templates. For this session, we're just going to focus on building a flexible button, as it's ideal for demonstrating the ideas and workflow I want to propose for your UI. What I'm showing you here is purely some groundwork for a system that I expect many of you to run away with and customize to suit your own needs. But hopefully the ideas shown tonight will get you thinking just how and what you can achieve with this. So that's an introduction to how a flexible UI can help your project. The visual assets I'm using for this demo come from two free asset store packages, simple UI for the buttons and backgrounds and simple vector icons for the icons. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the assets and a finished example of the project I'll be using from the link below. In a moment, we'll go through and get started with the main scripts we'll need to write. 